Hi, thank you for your really helpful input on this announcement page about our History Painting Then and Now project. Um, I've responded to all of you. I'm going to give you extra credit. And I, more than that, I want you to know that I take very seriously what you're sharing with me, the ideas you have, what you find to be obstacles. So, of course, it's, you know, I'm receiving this now and won't be able to apply it immediately to this current group assignment on history painting in the 21st century. But I do hope that at least the extended deadline made a difference for a lot of people who talked about just feeling the time crunch. So I want to check in to see how your ideas are developing together in your discussion posts. And I'm really enjoying reading what you have to say. And I'm thinking, wow, you've got a lot of ideas. So it is going to be difficult <laughs> to whittle them down. So I want to try to help do that. Um, so for here, for, for instance, here, Mahati makes a very important point right in the beginning, um, saying, OK, comparing Benjamin West's The Death of General Wolf, that painting was already a, a kind of a breakthrough, right, of the, from the strict idea that history painting ought to look like it's happening in the ancient Roman past. And instead, this idea that you can have modern people in a modern setting. Hmm. So in West's painting, the people are wearing the clothing of soldiers of the time rather than the togas of the ancient Romans. So I would say to you, hmm, what are the people wearing of what time period? In what time point in history does this painting seem to be taking place? Because, for instance, you know, as Mahati says so nicely, similar to West in storytelling, Monkman also embellishes the truth. That's a very good point. This isn't some factual world. This is an embellished world, maybe a world of myth, as much as it is of history. And one of the ways that Monkman embellishes the truth, according to Mahate, is to include his alter ego, Miss Chief Eagle Testicle. So back to the question of clothing and time period, here's Miss Chief Eagle Testicle. And the shoes she's wearing are definitely not 18th century shoes. Now, it's true that Native American nations of many regions of the Americas had some kind of a third gender, a two-spirit third gender tradition, but they generally didn't wear these kind of shoes. So this is an interesting point in terms of embellishing the truth. Whenever you're writing about art, if you're going to make that point, then point to some specific visual evidence that supports the claim. So if you're going to say, well, the truth is being embellished because Miss Chief Eagle Testicle is standing on stilettos, on a rock, there's a kind of a fantasy world happening here. So if it feels difficult to synthesize your group's many interesting ideas, come back to the questions, which was something Edith did that's very skillful. She structures her response in terms of the questions posed. And you can also create questions, further questions to pose. You, that's the best way to do analysis is to just break it down into questions and then responses. So Edith focuses on this question, if 18th century history painters aim to elevate the mind, to educate, to inspire, to reveal enduring values, what does Monkman want his history paintings to do to his audience or for his audience? So alert, this is one of the most important questions in art history. Who is this artwork addressing and what is it trying to do for them and to them? So Edith is proposing that Monkman wants to encourage a shared perspective. Very interesting idea. So if, if the group is going to include this, they, they want to build on this by explaining what that means. This is something you always want to do when you're thinking critically. Hmm, a shared perspective. What do I mean by that? What is a shared perspective? And how does Monkman create it? So how is this creating a shared perspective? What does it mean? 
Does it mean it's shared because we see so many different peoples all struggling against the drowning floods and looking to the native people for guidance? That's what you have to think about by looking at the artwork and thinking, okay, what is do what is Monk been doing specifically to create that shared perspective? Is it all these people reaching out together to Miss Chief Eagle Testicle? I just like to say that name over and over again. And Renee makes an awesome point here. We are taught that when we gaze at huge wall-sized paintings of history or mythological narratives that we are being spoken to with an authoritative voice, a trusted voice, and one that is an artist's rendering of an accurate account. So important. The size of the paintings, of history paintings, are themselves meaningful. They are supposed to be imposing. So then the question becomes, here's where you can build a whole analysis out of a core idea. Is Monkman presenting an authoritative voice, a trusted voice? Whose authority is on display? Is there one single authority? It's important that this is something of a confusing scramble of a painting and that we're not exactly clear what's happening. Is anyone winning or losing? Note that in a painting like Benjamin West's, this is about a victory in battle and, you know, he's dying, but it's, it's supposed to be that he's a hero. He's dying for a great cause and for an ultimate victory. Do you have any sense of victory or not in the painting by Monkman. And Monkman, excuse me, not Monkman, but Hope, Hope comes at it with a wonderful angle. She goes down from the grand, the authoritative, the magnificent mythological realm to something quite homey. How would you feel if someone neglected to include you in a special family photo? And she kind of uses that to reflect on the notion of family and history as a part of a kind of belonging. So there are so many wonderful things that you can do with this project, right? I think I can already feel from your responses that you have no shortage of ideas. The question is going to be how to kind of um, squeeze them into a focused form. So there are many different ways to do that. And I see that group four is already on a really kind of um, productive process of talking back and forth about how they want to break it down into chunks. Because you've got to do that when you're writing. You've got to chunk things into small bits or you just get overwhelmed. And so they actually came to the point where they had categories in their Google Doc that they were going to talk about. And so they could each kind of talk together about what to draw from various posts. Looks like they're on a great path. If you feel like your group isn't yet on a great path, why not have a Zoom meeting with me? If not everyone can attend because of time schedule differences, we can always record it and send it out to people. I would love to help you if you're stuck, just kind of get the wheels out of the mud. And otherwise I will be available, of course, through email and i hope you have fun with this because you know i would say my last parting thought is you know miss chief eagle testicle is if she's an authority she's an authority on the native american concept of the trickster the trickster figure that reality has woven into it a level of trickiness and so there's something playfully, um, playfully subversive in this particularly history.